as the How to Nuke video number two, and this one's focused on claymores. As you can see, this claymore right here is completely useless. I see things like this all the time. The guy runs right past the claymore, and nothing happens. Don't do that. Here is going to be the claymore you guys actually want to set on top of this building after I kill that guy. You put it on the open side of it rather than in the closed side. You cannot go through that railing right there. Right there, much better claymore. Do that. Alrighty guys, those are two pretty extreme examples of uh, claymores. Uh, the one was really, really bad. I know that obviously not everybody's doing that, but uh, I do see people placing claymores completely incorrectly, so I want to make a video real quick explaining both claymores and just like field perks or field upgrades, whatever they're called, and just try to get you guys to be able to use these much more to your advantage and be able to lock down areas. So basically, I'm going to show you guys how to lock down areas with claymores or at least explain the idea of doing so. Obviously, if you guys are playing ground war, you guys can do it like in this exact same spot that I'm doing in this gameplay. But this can also be applied in other ones as well. So the biggest thing I see is that people place claymores just really, really incorrectly around doors. Uh, if you're placing claymores around doors, you really want to be putting the claymore on the side that the hinges are not on, because that's when they open the door, it won't block it as much. Uh, if you place it on the side where the hinges are, the door is actually going to block a lot of the damage, um, or potentially all the damage, it doesn't do anything to them. Um, if it's a double door, a lot of the time what I'll do is I'll place it right in the middle, facing towards it, but obviously you want the doors to be closed for that. Um... But yeah, like, just please, guys, just think about where you're actually placing your claymores at. Claymores are extremely useful, and they can help out with things like watching your back a ton. Later on in this video, you guys are going to see a really good example of trying to lock down an area and try to explain to you guys how to move up your line of claymores to not always be in the exact same spot. Right there at the top of the ladder, obviously, you can put it in the same spot, but after I drop down, you want to try to move them around a little bit. Um, as furthermore, on top of that topic, I want to talk about using your uh, ammo crate to get claymores. The biggest time you want to use your ammo crate is for claymores themselves, and the biggest thing you want to worry about with that is you don't want to have one claymore almost charged while also having one claymore in stock. So basically, you don't want to be getting two claymores from your restock and then also put down an ammo crate. If you have that scenario going on and you only have one claymore down, you want to place the one claymore you have and then put the ammo crate down and then uh, that way you're going to be a lot closer to having two more claymores. If you already have two down, then I guess it's not really big of a deal. If you need ammo, then you know you have to obviously use it for ammo. But using for claymore is also a very, very good thing. The restock perk takes 30 seconds. So if your thing's almost restocked and you place the claymore, or you pick up another claymore rather from your ammo crate, you're basically wasting potentially up to 29 seconds of your, your restock perk. Or I guess it could be all 30 of it if you're uh, placing your ammo crate when you don't need to because you already have two. So just be conscious of that, and like I said, another thing is to try to move your line around. If you always have the claymores in the exact same spots, people are going to try to be a little bit less complacent going around that corner. Uh, so if you move it around, they have to kind of keep guessing, and a lot of the time it'll be kind of lackluster and be like, oh, well, the claymore's up there. I don't have to do anything about that. So right here, you see that I go down here. My, I was probably going to place a claymore right there, and then my teammate already has one there. So I'm going to put two up here. If you put two close together, the advantage you gain out of that is if they have EOD, you're going to kill them off of that as long as they keep running through after the first one, which a lot of people will do because they're like, oh, I have EOD. I'm not going to die the claymore. Then you hit them with two, and then they're dead. Um, the disadvantage to killing somebody with EOD with claymores is that obviously you're running through your claymores a lot quicker. So just be conscious of that, and that's where the ammo crate ordeal comes in handy a lot if you're getting rushed by a lot of people or if you're killing people with EOD. The... Other thing with that is that if you do put an ammo crate down, guys, please, please, please blow up the ammo crates. Uh, I get really frustrated, especially with teammates putting ammo crates down right next to me, and they don't blow them up. If you put down ammo crates, they are basically a little mini nuke. You can get one shot by them. EOD does absolutely nothing uh, against your own ammo crates. I don't really know why. I don't know if it's a bug or intentional. Either way, yeah, you can go 100 to 0 real quick on uh, your own ammo crate or a teammate's ammo crate. So you don't want to be camping next to them, and you also just, if they're yours, just blow things up. It makes your life so much easier. Obviously, if you have teammates around you, then you can you know give them a second to pick up ammo. You don't have to be a complete dick to them. You can be like, hey, yeah, let's go ahead and let this guy get some ammo real quick, and then uh, you know blow it up. But just don't, don't, don't think that you're safe because you're on an ammo crate. Because like I said, it will 100% one shot you. Uh, furthermore, in this video, you can see I'm placing the claymores on the left side um, because the people are coming from the left side up the staircase as well. Um, they're going to have less of a time to see it. If you place it on the right side there, they can actually see it. If you place it correctly, usually you're not going to do much. Right here, I'm using the claymores to back up from it. They can't really do much other than stun grenade them, though. They can try to blow them out. They're still going to take damage from it, which is going to alert you that, hey, there's somebody there. Uh, in a second here, you'll see that I go back and use my ammo crate. But I'm basically just using a line of claymores as like a defense, so that if I start losing a fight, I can back out, and then I still have my claymores there. So, this is like I said, this is like really, really good claymore gameplay. I know that you guys are like, oh, claymore gameplay, so much skill. Like, I'm sorry, it's in the game. Use it. Uh, it's definitely to your advantage to use all of these tips that I'm giving you for this. Claymores are huge for locking down an area. 
And then uh, you see me rotating back and forth. I don't have to worry about my back when I'm rotating back and forth because I have claymores there. So I know that if the gamers come up the staircase that they're going to at least do something with the claymores. The only thing that you can hear or that you can't really hear as good is stun grenades. Other than that, you're pretty much going to hear them. Uh, I guess the other alternative is also hacking them. But if you play them correctly, like I said, hacking them is rather difficult to do. Uh, I'm not going to say it can't be done. Uh, it has happened me a few times, but it should not really go down too easily if you play them completely correctly. Uh, on top of that, guys, the other things you get with your field perks are dead silence, and you also get, well, I'm using stims on this class, which you can get from the ammo crate. Uh, I'll talk about those two. The biggest thing that I use those for is rotations. If you guys are not using dead silence for rotations, then I would definitely recommend doing so. I know a lot of people like stopping power. The thing I personally don't like about stopping power is that it takes longer to charge. Stopping power, I believe, is the longest charging in the game, or at least, you know, on par with the other ones that charge just as long, because it's a long charge time. Uh, so I don't really like that because it just limits your possibilities of what you can use, or how quickly you can use them, rather. So I'd recommend using the Dead Silence ammo crate like I am in this video. If you go on a rotation, Dead Silence actually gives you more movement speed as well. I think it's like a 10% boost, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it actually is quite a bit. I uh, It's a lot harder to hit people, especially with a sniper, when they have that extra movement speed. Like, you're just not used to it whatsoever, so it's kind of hard to, like, you know, kind of figure out how much you have to lead and whatnot when they're using a different movement speed. So, the other thing, like I said, is the stims. Stims actually do reset your double sprint time as well, so if you use Dead Silence and you start running in the middle of it, if you pop a stim, you actually move faster because you get your... Uh, your, like your double up thing, I guess I'm going to call it. I know double up just makes you run longer, but you get that whole, the, the boosty speed. You guys know what I'm talking about. So use your stim in the middle of that as well if you're like in a really weird area because you'll, like I said, move even faster than without it. So that's another really good way to use that. As far as stim goes, guys, uh, use it. I don't want to say these sparingly because it's actually a really good thing to use and it recharges really quickly. That's a big reason why I like the stim is because you have two of them. So they actually recharge on 15 second intervals rather than 30 second intervals because there's two of them. So the other perks or just uh, ammo things, whatever you want to call them, recharge on 30 seconds. The claymores, uh, grenades, etc. Anything you only have one of recharge on 30 seconds. But the stim, since you have two, recharge on 15. So you can use them pretty, pretty good. But if you're using them back to back to back, then a lot of the time you'll run out of them. So if you're not like in any kind of danger, you might not want to use them, depending if you only have like one of them. So let's say that you like, you know, you get in a really big fight, kill one guy, then you kill another guy, and you're in a completely safe area, and <clears throat> nothing is rushing, you have maybe claymores in front of you where the guys can be coming from, then just don't use your stem there, so you can do that, and you don't have to wait 30 seconds to get your two stems back. Uh, I know a lot of people don't think about that because of how often they're up with restock. But, like I said, I, I think it's really useful. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about, too, guys, is placing claymores at the beginning of the game. So, if you're not using my class, I guess it's not really going to help you out nearly as much. But I don't recommend placing two claymores until you have the restock perk charging. So, if you you also have to have shrapnel because you already have one in your thing. You don't have shrapnel, then you're kind of screwed because you're not going to charge another one. But I recommend doing the... Uh, restock perk or putting the claymores down for two of them after your restock perk is already going that way you don't have to worry about having your claymore in some somewhere you don't really need it at just like maybe you place an aggressive claymore that you're like oh this one's gonna get me a kill or something like that you want to place it somewhere where it's actually gonna be defending you or your back so you can actually look forward without having to be worried about your back so for instance i'm just gonna use krobnik as an example I usually place my first claymore at the bottom of the staircase, and then if I'm restocking pretty good, I'll put another claymore on the very bottom of the house that I'm in. And if I'm only on two claymores, meaning I don't have restock, so I have shadow, I have two or three kills, I put the second claymore at the top of the staircase, which I showed you guys at the very beginning of the video. If you do the one at the top of the staircase, it's also going to still be watching your back. So you don't want to place one further away from your original line of claymores, basically until you have more claymores stocking up. Because then what happens then is that you can't replace your first claymore if it blows up. So if somebody goes down there and they blow up your first claymore, you don't have another claymore to place. So you either have to sit there and wait, which sucks because you're missing a lot of kills a lot of the time, or you have to risk you know getting killed behind you. Also, right here in this video, this is awesome, I get hip-fired through the wall on a 29. Okay. Yes, agreed game. You actually are completely correct. I, I don't disagree whatsoever. The guy had no idea it was there and hits me through the wall. RNG is very interesting on this game when you're on streaks, guys. Just, just This is very interesting. Uh, so either way, guys, there's the nuke. Hopefully that showed you guys a pretty good example of that. If you guys have more questions, let me know. I'm trying to think real quick. I'm going to let this play out for a second. Like I said, the, mu the video's audio have music playing in the background. But I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to kind of add in there for you guys. Uh, I think I covered pretty much all the bases. Like I said... Please, 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 if you guys have questions on this, just go ahead and ask me. I'd be more than happy to elaborate on things uh, as I 
you know, get the questions and whatnot. The In the future, I'm going to also make videos for specific areas on how to lock them down. This is more just like a broad view on it. And obviously, it does show you the area here on port. But in the future, I'll show you guys specific areas, where to put stuff, and should help you guys out a lot. But it's going to take me time to get the clips. I was talking about this earlier. It's hard for me to put the clips together for other maps because I can't just go into a private match and be like, all right, guys, here is the way you play this map because I have to do it like actually in a game. So it kind of sucks. I can't just you know go into a private match and record stuff for you guys. But it is what it is, I suppose. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I don't think I have anything else to talk about. I wrote down me a little uh, little chart here, and I think I covered all of the awesomenesses in the chart. So I'm just going to hang out with you guys here for a few and get sniped, and hopefully I call this nuke in, and then we can call it a video. Because if not, people are going to be like, it wasn't real. Just kidding. I know nobody's going to do that. You guys, are, you guys are much more mature than that, right? I have mature viewers only. 1247, baby. Type it on in. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Make sure you guys do leave me a comment. I appreciate it. Guys, I don't know what the next topic is going to be for the How to Nuke series, but hopefully this one is also useful. Uh, quite a bit of useful content in this video, I would say, if you guys actually think about it for a little bit. So hopefully this helps you guys out. Schlatt me know. Boom goes the dynamite. Let's see what our stats were on this game. Let's see, let's see. Losing by 70. Nope, just kidding. We win. 54-2. We'll take it, boys. Thank you guys so much for watching.